Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. Directly, Granny. I uh, got him running. Running where? Oh, into town, uh, back, uphill, downhill, around the golf pasture. What you trying to do to that boy? This morning you had him swimming up and down the cement pond like he was chasing a catfish. <laughs> well, I'm just testing him, Granny. You see, he thinks he's got a hanker and a go courting. Courting? Yep. Jethro? Yep. Ah, uh, what girl is he hankering to court? Well, I don't think he's got a girl yet. He's just got the hankering. <laughs> that youngin ain't ready for courting. <laughs> maybe he is, maybe he ain't. That's why I'm running him and swimming him. I figured to dull his edge, you might. Then if he still feels like chopping wood, he's ready. <laughs> Yonder he comes. He don't look tired to me. Me neither. I don't think he's gonna be able to stop. <laughs> been worse, you could have took out five, ten foot of wall. <laughs> I'm sorry I busted this fancy vase, but I reckon I got going too fast. Yeah, I reckon. How far'd you run? Oh, I figured 15, 20 mile. Top speed. Oh, no, sir, I stopped once. <laughs> well, there were some fellas digging this here ditch, and they looked right tuckered. So I dug them a block or two a ditch while they rested. <laughs> but I run extra special fast the rest of the way home to make up for it. We seen you. And heard you. <laughs> well, boy. You swum about five miles, run 15 to 20, dug a couple blocks of ditch. How do you feel about courting right now? Uncle Jed, if they was a pretty girl on the other side of this house, I'd jump clean over it. <laughs> He's, He's ready. ready. <laughs> Here you are, Paul. Thank you, Ellie. Alan Jethro, let's talk about courting. Well, he, uh, I'm fixing to advise Jethro on courting. Yes, sir, I want to hear the advice, too. Well, uh, advice to girls is allowed to be a mite different than advice to boys. Well, different how? You go ask your granny. Yes, sir. <laughs> granny? <laughs> Close that door. Granny, what you doing in there? I'm listening. What for? You ain't liable to hear anything you don't already know. I realize that. I'm just checking my memory. <laughs> you women folks, you have your talk someplace else. Jethro and me is fixing to talk man to man. Come on, Granny. Let's go talk outside, woman to woman. Then we'll go court. Well, <laughs> mate, courting's for boys. Girls just sit around and wait. Jed, you sure got your work cut out for you. <laughs> Now then, Jethro, how much do you know about courting? Well, it's kind of simple. You find a girl, and then you marry her. <laughs> Boy, I want to tell you something. There's a whole heap of in-between. <laughs> like what? Like uh, finding the right girl, for one thing. Sometimes that ain't so easy. <laughs> well, Uncle Jet, how will I know when I find the right girl? Well, the way it happened to me, I knew just like that. I looked at her, she looked at me, and music commenced to play. Well, where was the music coming from? From my hearts, I reckon. Well, I ain't never heard no music come from my heart. There's no one else's neither. <laughs> of course not, because you ain't met the right girl yet. But when you do, you'll hear it. I heard a bell ring. Does that mean something? <laughs> it means somebody is calling. <laughs> 
Ken Clarbert speaking. Hello, Mr. Clarbert. Jane Hathaway here. Uh, did I by any chance leave a large brown envelope there last evening? Yes, ma'am. Right here by the window. Good. I'll have Miss Trigo drop over to... Is Jethro there? Yes, ma'am. He's right here. I'll drop over and pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> no call for you to do that. I'll have Jethro fetch it right down to the bank to you. Uncle Chad, I want to commence courting. Just a minute. The bank is a fine place to commence. There's a lots of pretty girls work there. Oh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jethro will be down directly, as soon as he uh, washes up and puts on his good clothes. Well, no bother at all. Bye. <laughs> Dickity dog! I'm gonna carry this down to the bank, and I'm gonna carry me a girl back. Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> it ain't as simple as all that. Even if you should find the right girl, you gotta make court and talk first. I do? Why, of course. Well, Uncle Chet, how do you make court and talk? We you gotta kinda sidle into it. Like, you start off with a uh, nice day, ain't it? Uh, and then you work around to where it looks like it's gonna be a nice night, or a walk, or a drive, or dance. And, of course, along the way, you gotta throw in a couple of my two purties and uh, get your dandy dancer. We talk like that. I'll catch you on now, Uncle Jed. All right, boy, you got enough to get you started. Yes, sir. <laughs> Some girl is in for a mighty spirited courtship. <laughs> Now then, type up a business expense voucher for last night's dinner conference. Uh, food, uh, $150. Beverage, $200. Entertainment, $15. Entertainment at a business dinner? Guest speaker. Gave a very interesting demonstration of the 27.5% depletion allowance benefits. I'd better make a note of his name. Of course. Uh, C.D. Laverne. Laverne C.D. <laughs> That's right. Now, take a letter to, uh... Excuse me, I'm sorry, but there's a chickadee, Laverne, who insists on seeing Mr. Drysdale. Chickadee? <laughs> what? Well, you tell old chick I'll call him from the club. Call me nothing. You, you promised me cash on the barrel head for the show I did last night. You are C.D. Laverne? Just call me chicken. <laughs> that was a very interesting demonstration of depletion allowance benefits, Miss Laverne. <laughs> Thank you. I do this dance where I take off everything except 27 and a half percent. Howdy. Well, howdy to you. You're Jethro, aren't you? Uh, yes, ma'am. You hear any music? <laughs> no, should I? Oh, yeah. I should, too, but I don't, darn it. Well, if you'll wait, I'll hum something for you. <laughs> what do you say, Chief? Oh, Jethro, how nice to see you. Oh, howdy, Miss Jane. <laughs> something wrong? No, just listening for music. <laughs> what kind of music? Heart music. Heart music? <laughs> Try me again, Jethro. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Jethro, I'd like to speak to you in the pool. Pool? The secretarial pool. Let's go. <laughs> I shall return, Jethro. <laughs> Here you are, Chickadee. Oh, thanks, Mr. Drysdale. You know, for your next dinner, you ought to use my specialty act. The one I'm famous for. Mm-hmm. They bring out this great big egg. There's music coming from it. The MC says, here's Chickadee. And I pop out of the egg, and I go into my dance. Oh, cute, huh? <laughs> Try the Chase Manhattan Bank. They love big eggs. You don't even have to hire an orchestra. Look, I got this little transistor radio. See? Watch. I tuck it in here. That's very interesting. Don't call us, we'll call you. Of course, for my specialty, I have to charge a little more. Those big eggs cost a lot of money. I'll keep you in mind. Hi. Hi. I hear it. I hear the music just like Uncle Jed said I would. Uncle Jed? Uh, yeah. He said that I'd know you was the one just as soon as I heard the music. Oh, he caught my egg. Come on, let's go. Wait a minute. Don't rush me. Oh. 
I forgot. Um, it's a nice day, ain't it? I mean, it's gonna be a nice night for a stroll, a drive, or a dance. I mean, uh, uh, you sure are pretty. And, uh, I bet you're a dandy dancer and lots of sweet talk like that. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Clarence speaking. Oh, howdy, Miss Jean. Jethro get there all right? Yes, and he brought the envelope, but now he's disappeared. I can't find him any place. I see. Uh, well, uh, tell me, uh, is the bank missing any girl? <laughs> I mean, uh, Jethro might have thought it went off. <laughs> Jethro? Oh, 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 I hardly think that. Wait a minute. There is one possibility. A girl from the secretarial pool who... False alarm. No girls missing. Oh, that's too bad. Well, uh, thank you, Miss Jane. Bye. What's too bad, Jed? Jethro didn't find him no girl down to the bank. I told you that young'un wasn't ready for courting. Well, maybe just as well. I was worried I hadn't given him a good enough talk first. With Jethro, it takes a little extra. That's a fact. The last I heard, he thought his ma found him under a cabbage leaf. <laughs> well, I'll finish cleaning my rifle, and when he comes back, I'll take him hunting. That'll give me a chance for a real man-to-man -man talk. Looks like Jethro done all right. Found herself a girl. From here, it looks like he found himself a girl and a half. <laughs> hey, kid, is this where your uncle lives? Oh, yeah, me too. He must be a millionaire. Well, he's got 35 or 40 million. Does that make him one? Does it ever? Tell me something. Why do you drive this uh, truck? Well, I already run to town and back once today. Huh? <laughs> Ooh, -ee. that's a big one. A big strapping girl like that can sure help you with the housework, Granny. Housework? That girl can pull a plow. <laughs> Let's go meet Uncle Sugar. Well, that's Uncle Jay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Gee, I finally made it. A private engagement in a big Beverly Hills mansion. Oh, hey, hey hold on. You're not engaged yet. <laughs> that's right. Where's your uncle? Hey, Uncle Jed, I done found her. Come see. Here she is, Now, now, Jethro, stop your bell or are we coming? Here she is. I heard the music, just like you said I would, Uncle Jed. The girl, the one and only, Miss, uh, I don't know your name. Laverne, Chickadee Laverne. Well, howdy there, Miss Laverne, Chickadee Laverne. This here is Granny. Howdy. Howdy. You people live here? You own this mansion? Yes, ma'am. Uh, they find oil on our place back home, so we moved out here. Oh, you're one of those oil millionaires. I played all over Oklahoma and Texas. You don't say. <laughs> well, here's my daughter, Ellie Mae. Howdy. Honey, I don't want to worry you, but your fur piece is moving. This here is possum. Ellie Mae, take them critters outside. I told you again and again, the house is no place for them. Yes, sir, Paul. <laughs> When's the engagement? Tonight? Tomorrow night? I'm ready. Me too. Uh, now, uh, maybe we better get better acquainted before we start talking engagement. Uh, why don't we all sashay out to the kitchen? Oh, come on, Miss Chickadee. I'll take you. Well, uh, what do you women folk think of her? Well, don't you think she's a little bit too old to marry up with Jethro, Pop? Of course she is. It kind of worried me too, especially her talking about playing all over Oklahoma and Texas. Take a heap of years just to do that. She's about the right age for you, Jed. Granny. Yeah, why don't you marry up with her, Paul? Then I could have me a mom. I mean, hush that kind of talk to both of you. She's Jethro's woman. He found her. According to what he told me, it was true love, too. He heard their hearts making music and everything. I still say she's too old for Jethro. Well, you can't tell about city women, Granny. I've seen old ones that look young and young ones that look old. <laughs> well, I'll just go and ask her how old she is. Now, wait, Ellie. If we're going to find out Miss Chickadee's age, we got to do it in a kind of roundabout way. I don't want her embarrassed none. You leave it to me, Jed. Come on. <laughs> what a kitchen. Oh, yes, ma'am. This here is my favorite room in the whole house, because this is where Granny keeps the vittles. Do you like to eat vittles? I don't know. 
I don't believe I've ever eaten any. Well, Miss Laverne, Chickadee Laverne, how are you and Jethro getting along? Oh, just call me Chickadee. I love this mansion, and this kitchen is the end. Oh, no, there's a lot more out back. Ain't that right, Granny? Speaking of that, how old are you? <laughs> Granny, that ain't hardly what I'd call roundabout. Excuse her, ma'am. Oh, that's all right. By the way, I don't want to rush you, but I'm ready to work any time. It's going to be a thrill working in this beautiful mansion. You hear that, Granny? Yes, real, I'll say this for you. You didn't pick a lazy woman. Thank you. Maybe you better get better acquainted with Granny here, because she's the one you're going to be working with. you got to be kidding. Huh? I can do anything you can do, honey. Granny's little, but she's wiry. She moves around real good. Yeah, I, I know, but, I mean, well, couldn't I work with her? Well, uh, sure, if you'd rather. Well, I mean, she's uh, younger and all. She's a heap younger than you. Granny. How old are you? Granny, uh, how about you and Ellie Mae whomping up some vittles for Miss Chickadee, and I'll show her around the outside. Can I go along with you, Uncle Jay? No, Jethro, you finish eating. You're still a growing boy. You're kidding. <laughs> oh, can I come along and show her my critters? Well, we can do that later, Ellie Mae. Right now, Miss Chickadee and me got a little talking to do. Youngins, you better clear out. Something tells me there's going to be fireworks any minute. Now, I realize that uh, Jethro looks like a full-grown man, but he's still kind of a boy. Yeah. He's cute, though. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. He's a fine youngin. Now, uh, I'd like to know a little more about you, Miss Chickadee. Oh, you mean about my work? Yeah, everything. Just uh, everything right from the start. Well, I got my start in burlesque, New York. Hmm, sounds like a nice place. <laughs> about uh, how long ago was that? You don't have to be exact. Uh, I'm just trying to get a notion. <laughs> oh, about 18, 19 years ago. Is that a fact? <laughs> That's when I first broke out of the egg. You uh, come from an egg? Sure, you know about that, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, why don't you go over yonder and uh, look around the cement pond over there? I want to have a word with Granny. Oh, swell. I love this place. It's beautiful. Well, thank you, ma'am. Uh, I'll see you in a bit. You know, Granny, maybe Miss Chickadee ain't the right woman for Jethro. Of course she ain't. She's too old for him. Well, ain't that so much. Uh, fact is, she's only a little older than Jethro. Who said? She said. She told me she was born 18, 19 years ago in a town named of uh, Burlesque, New York. <laughs> Hogwash. She ain't no 18 or 19. Well, whether she is or whether she ain't, there is a bigger problem. What's that? Well, what with Jethro thinking he was found under a cabbage leaf, <laughs> and her thinking she come from an egg, I just don't see much future for them two. Appreciate you showing me how to work with you, Miss Chickadee. Glad to do it, kid. Say, when you get your glove off, that's when we commence to work it? Yeah, that's when we really get started. <laughs> Tell me something. Your dad's worth like 35, 40 million bucks, right? Why do you want to work? Oh, I don't mind. Besides, if I don't, Granny will want me. Yeah, I had an aunt like that. She shoved me out on the stage when I was 15. I never knew my mother. Me neither. You mean... Your father's a widower? Yes, ma'am. I was kind of hoping he'd marry up with you so as I could get me a mom. Really? I like you. And my critters like you, too. And when critters take a liking to folks, they's generally good and not mean or nothing. Yeah. Hey, you want me to show you what Elmer can do? Now watch him take this here grape out of my pocket. <laughs> He sure is clever with those little hands. Could he untie a bow? <laughs> sure he could. Elmer, 
You and I may be working together. You? According to what I've been told, one year of your life is the same as seven years with human folks. That ought to put you close to uh, 100 years old. <laughs> well, I didn't aim to worry you none. It's just that if I'd lived as long as you had, I might be able to work out this vexing problem I got with Jethro and Miss Chickadee. Well, if this ain't a fine howdy do, you sit there a whittling like you ain't got a care in the world when your own kin is fixing to marry up with a woman old enough to be his ma. I'm studying on the problem, Granny. Well, you better study fast, because as soon as Jethro is done eating, he's going to want to come in squirting. <laughs> Clavett, I'm sorry to trouble you, but I need one more signature. No trouble at all. Not compared to the trouble we got with Jethro. Now, Granny. Well, hasn't he arrived home yet? Oh, of course. He's right out there in the kitchen now, poking down the middle. I shall pop in and pass the time of day with the handsome lad. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Jane would make a heap better match for Jethro than that old. Now, Granny, don't bother Mr. Drysdale with our family problems. Now, Mr. Clavett, as I've said before, your problems are my problems. I am willing, and I hope able, to help you in any way possible. Well, that's mighty neighborly of you to take so much interest, but... Uh... Don't think nothing of it. We bankers like to take as much interest as we can. <laughs> <laughs> I was making a joke, you interest banker. <laughs> I suppose you might call that an inside joke. Oh! Well, come on inside and tell it. We ain't got no time for jokes. Jethro is a heading to the altar with the wrong woman. What? What's this? Now, Granny, Mr. Dreiser got a bank to run. Precisely why I'm interested in your problems. Now, tell me more. Well, you see, uh, Jethro is in love with this girl. Girl? Hey! <laughs> well, Miss Chickadee does look a mite old for her years. Did you say Chickadee? <laughs> Yes, sir. Miss Laverne, Chickadee Laverne. Where did Jethro meet her? Down by your bank, I think. Mr. Clampett, that girl is a stripper. What's a stripper? <laughs> Someone who takes off their clothes. <laughs> What's wrong with that? But she takes them off every night. Well, I don't sleep in my clothes, neither. <laughs> Gee, sweet innocent Jethro has run afoul of your Chickadee Laverne. Yes, I've been told. Mr. Clampett, believe me, this is not the right girl for Jethro. I told you so. Please, Mr. Clappett, let us get her away from here as quickly as possible. Well, I wouldn't want to hurt her feelings none. She's right friendly and a willing worker. Here she comes. Hold on, I reckon it's my duty to talk to her first. <laughs> uh, uh, Miss Chickadee, uh, about the wedding. Oh, that's going to have to wait, Uncle Sugar. I got this great new act that's going to make me the sensation of show business. Now you watch. gonna be a great act. The MC gives me a big intro. I walk through the curtains with this raccoon. Right away, he starts in fasting my... Great act! Uh, great act! Now, let's hurry down the bank, and I'll sign you up for the big convention next week. <laughs> hey, Uncle Jed, where's Mr. Drysdale taking my sweetie? Never mind, Jethro. But I found her. She's mine. I courted her and sweet doctor and all. Forget about her, Jethro. Go take yourself a swim. <laughs> We got shed of her. That's a blessing. More of a blessing than you know, Granny. I was falling in love with her. No. Yep. I looked at her, she looked at me, and music commenced to play. <laughs> My age, too. <laughs> No. 
now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.